good. So we're saying goodbye to this thing. This is uh, where Roger's rod works, which is here, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna be doing it. So it is what it is. We all know what it is, and uh, we're saying goodbye. Goodbye for a while. Sherry's got to drive me home. Hey guys, it's Adam back with the fifth and final episode of Sonata Blues Project. Um, I know I should do some big reveal kind of thing, but I just, the car's here, the car's ready, and I think we're just gonna, I think I'm just gonna give it to you guys, uh, if you don't mind. So let's take a look. So, a year and two months after I started this thing, we are here. We've got the, we've got the blue paint. And what's funny is now you, you probably can't tell, but I'm looking to the right, that right front fender. And what's the funny thing about a true candy paint job is it doesn't really. When I say right front fender, I mean I'm I'm looking at that, and it, <laughs> the damnable thing is that the true majesty of candy colors just doesn't come. They just don't come through. This is cobalt blue. This is four coats of cobalt blue and it certainly doesn't come through unless you have actual sunlight on it so this is all diffused light it, it's a real blue car and you're probably saying I, i'm not quite sure what all the fuss was about why did gusso see but then what you're doing is you're noticing that something strange and wonderful has happened at the front end of course we've got two brand new lights you've got to replace your lights when you do this sort of thing but mostly we've got a custom grill that makes the 2008 Hyundai Sonata aspect of this uh, rebuild uh, a little bit less obvious. Um, so custom paint from Rogers Rod Works, Sack Rogers in A Crew, Mississippi. God, it took it took some months. It took bucketfuls of cash. Please don't ask how much. It took a year uh, of working on this thing uh, from the very first free flow intake manifold and the dual exhaust system to the Krager rims, which you see in the Como tires and the, uh, the odyssey of the uh, hub rings that I went through in my fourth and next to last episode. This is the fifth and final episode. But finally, the paint is here. One thing that Zach said he would do, I think, well, he, he replaced both the front and rear fender cover. So this stuff is all, this stuff's all new. Um, and by the way, once you get really nice paint, you just, you become an obsessive. It's really like an OCD. And I don't know if you can see the sun. See, that's the, the majesty of true. If you're, a, if you're a, somebody born to, to sort of live in this world, then you, you, you go for that silver base coat, two coats of silver paint. So actually, he stripped this all the way back. Let me, let me, let me go back to the so Zach stripped this all the way back. He took off the white paint, he ground it down almost to the metal because he said, you're, he said, unfortunately, he goes, I, I didn't want the, my jet paint job to flake off. He stripped it down to the metal and then he put a coat of primer or two on it. The other thing he did, interestingly enough, let me, let me, all right. The thing he did was down here, there were some chrome strips, go back to the original chrome strips, he said, well, I think we should take those out. And I agree with him. I think it gives much cleaner lines. Um, it's much more sort of how cars are these days, not maybe back in 2008. And then of course he had to fill in. So he, he did some incredible Bondo work here. You would not know that there were, those were sort of tranches along there. Uh, you know, and the proof's in the pudding, right? He did beautiful block. Look at the reflection there tells you all you need to know. You can't even, the car just disappears into the landscape. That's bizarre, into the landscape. I love these icons. Can we do that again? That is extraordinary. The car disappears. You wanna know what a good paint job is. It's that the car disappears. Um, what you don't realize, and one of the reasons why, I mean, take a look, beautiful detail. What you don't realize is, and why it's expensive to have this done, is all of this stuff, all of this stuff, right? The car, if you're gonna change the car color, that was all white in the original, it was all white. All that has to be done, the door. So the details, the number of times I went down to take a look at what he and the guys were doing. 
all that has to be done. Right, all that stuff in there. Lots and lots and lots of detail work. And of course, because we're all obsessives, you know, when you come along later, you can begin to see little things that, little things that are. Beautiful, he took off the thing that said Sonata back there. He took off the, everything but the Hyundai. So this is a stock Hyundai. Two coats of primer, two coats of silver base coat, four coats of cobalt blue from House of, House of Color. K-O-L-O-R, and two coats of clear coat. How many coats is that? So you, why would anybody do this? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I think you gotta be a little crazy to, to wanna do this, but it's done. And you know, and then of course, once it's done, then you start to notice all the stuff that needs. So what you do, if you're that kind of person, as you go and you spend $14.95 and you get, what's this called? Best in show detailer, boost color, depth and clarity between washes. And then you know, what do you do? Right? You, become, you become an obsessive is what, is what happens when you get a car like this. So, you know, most, there are good people out there saving the planet. What am I doing? I'm just polishing the paint. My father was a painter, and I think that's the best explanation I can give, is my father was a, he was a painter, a fine arts painter, landscape painter. Uh, I never had any artistic talent at all, but I think all of his hunger for color um, kind of went into me in a, in a perverse form. So there we are, there we are. Fog lights are sort of hid, semi-hidden down there, they're new too. Um, car, these brand new lights is much better at night than it used to be. That's it. I mean, that's all she wrote. It's done. It's done. I, I mean, and, and you know what? It, it, I don't know how to say this, but when you finally got something like this done, you, it's horrible. You start, you feel like a little disappointed almost. It's like, I'm going to have this wonderful thing to drive for a while. Um, I mean, every time I get in and every time I stir it up, I love it. But now it's like, okay, that's done. That's how men are. Men are, men are crazy. I want to kind of just <laughs> get the needle across the record and stop for a second and say I got to the end of this five-part series and I I just I realized all of a sudden that in good conscience I couldn't end this one where I was about to end it it's like I buried the lead I forgot to sort of point out what this whole transformative journey was about and so can I may I do that let, let, let's cut back to the beginning why should I think that blues harmonica players would care about one guy's attempt to take a you know an old white Hyundai Sonata and transform it into a, a a badass blue car. Why would I think that you'd care? Well, because it's not really just about the car. It's about personal transformation. And I'd like you to think about this entire series as an exercise in how can we take what we're given and how can we dream a dream of what it might be? And how can we act step by step and negotiate the challenges and eventually get to the place that we were dreaming of getting to? And that's what this series has been about. You start with that car. That car is you. That car is you on the day when you first walk through the doors of my first YouTube lesson or being awakened to something powerful in the blues harmonica. And the question is, how do you get from that, that car, that old white beat up, 
the car with a heart of gold, the car with some a power plant underneath the hood. How do you get there? How do you get from there, point A to point B? And that's what this has been about. It's, a, it's an individuated journey. Your journey is your journey. It's not the same as my journey. What I've done is I've opened my, my life and my heart and tried to guide you and show you how my particular quirky journey helped me, end, helped me start from a place that didn't look very prepossessing to a place that I've got to now where I've got, you know, whatever this thing is, this car. How did that work? And what you realize is there's a series of challenges along the way, and this is for you as a blues harmonica player. There's a series of challenges, and each one of them is gonna be different for every player. Uh, there's a page on my website called um, a Lesson Plan for Success, and there I've tried to sort of lay out what I think are some basic stages of the journey, a la uh, the hero with a thousand faces, Joseph Campbell, because there's an element of heroism in any kind of journey like this. But the element of heroism is basically not turning back when the going gets tough. And in this five-part series, I've shown you how there were some pretty tough moments, um, including, I mean, the hub rings moment where I just could not get this damn car to, to you know, could not get the front wheels to, to be in balance. And it turned out I was missing some fundamental lesson. And, and only by dint of continuing to bang my head against the wall and keep asking people, keep asking guides along the way for guidance. And eventually I got the guidance I needed and I solved the problem. So that's what your blues harmonica journey is gonna be. If some of you choose to, to find an old uh, car and, and trick it out, um, great. If the only lesson you take away is that you can trust your dream and trust your passion, Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. You can trust that, but it's gonna take work. It's gonna take a little bravery. <laughs> it's gonna take a little money in this case, um, but it's gonna take, and it's gonna take creative improvisation, creative approach. It's gonna take every bit of wisdom that you have, and you gotta constantly pay attention to that feedback loop. So I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. What is your passion? What is your bliss? If you're watching this, it, it, it may be you know blue cars, but it may also be just the sound of blues harmonica and uh, if you trust that and if you trust that the stuff that really interests you and the players whose sounds really interest you if Gusso's sound starts to not interest you find somebody else and go with that but ultimately it's going to be your journey nobody can replace that and nobody the wonderful thing is nobody can can live it out you have to live it out and that's a great thing what did what did I see on the TV the other day live hard die empty live full die empty. I thought, well, you don't want to die empty, but live full and, and play it out. And uh, hopefully I've helped you figure out a way of doing that. All right, I'm done. Time to, time to put the car in gear.